Welcome back folks, Steve here, KM9G, and today on the QCX mini build we have magical shiny donuts for ham radio. That's right folks, we're going to wind a toroid, and not just any toroid, but the main toroid on the radio. And this is a complex wind, this, for me it's the 20 meter kit, so this is 30 and 3 and 3 and 3 all on one toroid with multi-taps. And I don't think I have seen anybody wind a toroid in a video, so hopefully this video will show you just how much fun it is, um, or how much fun it isn't. Uh, it's really more tedious than anything else, and it's not overly complicated, it's not that big of a pain, it's just, it is. And compared to like quickly dropping solder legs, component legs through a circuit board and dabbing a little solder on them, it does take a little bit of time. But you got this. So stick around and see how we got this together. Do you want a free Raspberry Pi Pico? PCB Way is sponsoring a Raspberry Pi Pico contest. Share a project and get a new one for free. Any submission between 419 and 619 gets you a free Pi Pico. If you're one of the top 10, you also could win a Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig model and a $100 coupon. Check out the link in the description. All right, a quick talk about tools before we get started too far. Um, what I do when I am going to solder a project is I first turn on my soldering iron and I make sure I have all of my gear and my lights and my equipment that I need. I have a link in the description down below to my solder kit, all of my tools that I use, but real quick, use some high quality solder. This is Kester brand solder and it is, uh, we'll just pull it out. It is 44 rosin core, Kester 44 rosin core. And this is the, I don't know, the it's leaded solder and it's the 60, 67, 30, whatever. But again, the link's down in the description down below, but use yourself some good quality solder. That's gonna make a big difference, number one. Number two, use a good quality iron. This is the uh, Hacko FX888D. Um, if you're going to be doing a soldering project um, and you want it to, to work and last and whatnot, have yourself a very good temperature controlled solder station. This is fantastic. This is a pretty decent price. I want to say it's around $100. Um, I have soldered quite a bit of stuff on this channel and it has turned out fairly okay for the most part. Um, flux is your friend. This is MG Chemicals Rosin Flux. and. When you use flux, the next thing you're gonna to have to do is flux remover um, to get the flux residue itself off because it is conductive and it is corrosive. Um, just some generic isopropyl alcohol. The higher the percentage, the better. Um, electronics cleaner, various brushes, some nice glasses for being able to look at tiny parts for a long period of time, all that stuff. I have a video which I will link up above for um, how I solder, I do a real quick solder project and show all the different steps that I go through and some, some pitfalls and so forth. I'll go over some of that stuff here as we go, but this is not an in-depth how to solder video. This is kind of like, um, you know, watch me make this thing and see what mistakes I make or uh, what mistakes I don't make uh, that you guys can take tips from or you can avoid whatever the case may be. Um, with that being said, let's get right into it. I use these little priority mailboxes to store the project itself and then I use a sorting tray or some other method to organize the parts to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to start with the transceiver first. The transceiver does require a modification. It is clearly labeled in the instructions what the modification is. There was a bug that was found after it was built and shipped and whatnot and all of that is taken care of. So I probably do not need the case for the transceiver right now. I'll leave that in the box. I probably don't need the feet. I'm sure I don't need any of the parts in the bag labeled amp. So all that stays in this box for later work. And I probably don't even need this right now because I know when I will need that. And what I'm gonna do is just 
put on a good YouTube video or a uh, live stream with the bunch or something in the background and you know start watching that and playing around with this kit and having fun and really that's what it comes down to there really isn't any timeline I've heard this project takes about four hours to complete so without further ado let's get into it oh good bag holy moly open up all right sign of a good project is a good bag that it comes in so I'm going to get my laptop out and bring up the instructions and they will be sitting off screen over there and we will start rolling. Okay, now that step one is out of the way, breaking that piece off of the circuit board, step two is to wind the toroid and they're, they're just breaking you in quick here. So what I need to do is I need to figure out this is where the toroid's going to go, T1. And which toroid is it going to be that fits there? So now we got to do a little bit of parts inventory. And this is where that parts tray comes into play. So I'm going to put my extra screws into my parts tray. And then this is the low pass filter. So that was all secondarily identified and there are three yellow toroids in there so my guess is that is the one that they want there and then one of them there and then one of them there I'm going to check the instructions real quick to see if they give me a measurement on the toroid okay so a real quick look at the instructions says this is a T50-2 and this is a T37-2 so those are the two that we need for this part of the kit and then the low pass filter over here goes into these other three sections. So, and this is this is instruction number two and then 40 pages later you get to this instruction. The instructions are fantastic. I just think that it's interesting that that's how they do that. Um, so I'm gonna get to winding this and in order to wind it, we need some enamel wire. So I might just do the first video on the winding of the toroid only because it's a, uh, one of those things that intimidates a lot of people, and this is actually a pretty particularly intimidating toroid. This is the 20 meter kit, and the 20 meter kit needs 30, three, three, and three turns on this toroid. So here goes nothing, right? And so that's something that you need to watch out for right there before it happens. Zoom in for you guys. There you go, can't even can't even get it to focus on it, it's so tiny. But you wanna make sure that your wire doesn't kink at all. And so, pay attention to that kind of thing and keep an eye out for it so it doesn't happen. And all you need to do is unwind it. And the reason why is this wire is really fragile and that kink could just be a break. Okay, so I'm gonna put the board away and what they suggest in the instructions is to create some loops and I would assume that there's more enamel wire here than you could ever possibly need for this and I would also encourage you to be neat and be of an abundance mentality when it comes to the magnet wire because it's actually really easy to just go out and buy more magnet wire and have it shipped to your QTH than it is to stress out about whether you've got the right amount or the wrong amount or whatever. So there's a couple of sections in here where he just wants you to um, create some loops. So go ahead and make some big loops. And we will find out at the end of me wrapping up this toroid if this is an example of how to do it right or how not to do it. And I am happy with either one of those outcomes because I would rather give you an example of what not to do and how to fix it than give you an example of, hey, look how amazing I am and how I did this all in one shot and I'm such an expert and then have it not work. <laughs> so I'm not even moving into this with a terrible amount of confidence and I have wound toroids before, but I'm not scared of it at the same time.
so I don't think you guys should be scared of it either. What is a pain though is getting this unwound without kinking it, and I don't even know that unwinding this is a good idea. So now we have a big mess of enamel wire here, and every pass through the center like that is considered a turn. And what he says in the instruction manual is just make sure that you wind everything in the same rotation pattern. So this is three, 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 and 30. And so I wanna do three clockwise, followed by a loop, followed by three more clockwise, followed by a loop, followed by three more clockwise, followed by a loop, followed by the final 30 clockwise. I don't wanna do clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, if that makes any more sense. Okay, so in the instructions, he just, goes back and forth. So the table of the windings that you need starts with 333 three, three, and 30, and then every time he talks about it, it is 3333. Three, three, three. And it looks like he starts off with the large number of turns first. So that's what I am going to do. And the way that he has it set up is the, I think he's also winding it left-handed and I'm right-handed. Um, the first winding comes all the way through and comes over the top and down to meet the circuit board. And the last winding goes over the bottom, out the bottom. So to me, that is the first winding is it comes over the top and out. So that's my first winding right there. So I'm gonna hold that between my thumb and forefinger while I sew the rest of this stuff through. And so this is my second turn. And I'm just watching, keeping an eye out for any kinks or anything like that. Okay, so there is two turns and I need to do 30. And 30 is going to be an even set of three tens or six fives. And so I'm gonna group them logically as I'm making the turns, and also physically, and then I can ungroup them later on as we get farther along in the process. So there is three, Okay, so that should be 30. And so now I wanna go back and group these and count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 is one set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Ten is two sets. One, two. Let's go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 is three sets. All right, so we've got three sets in there. So we have the first set of 30 done. I'm gonna move these around so that they're nice and pretty. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave myself a nice loop out. So I'm gonna give it two knuckles. Sure, why not? Then I need to do three, three, and three of the same way. And I do believe I've got, like I said, plenty of wire left over for three, three, and three. So now I need to go back through the top and hopefully not tie any more knots. Okay, so there's my first turn on my second set. And I've got my loop out here. Turn number three. So there's the first set. There's the second set. And now it's starting to interfere with my original set. Let me move them out of the way, make room. And you can see I've got a ton of wire left over here, so I'm not really worried about how much wire I'm using up. Number three, the last turn. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this. And we are free. Whew, let's take a look at that. It ain't pretty yet, but we aren't done yet either. So the next thing to do is to get this thing mounted up onto the circuit board. Okay, so now what they want you to do is put this thing on the board and get your wires through from start to finish. And it's not really clear what the holes are, so I'm gonna put these two here through and then double check. And I'm just feeding through the last ends of the wire, which would make sense. Yep, I think that works. Okay, so what he says to do next is to take these wires and twist them up underneath of the board so that it holds your toroid in place. Excellent. Okay, so that is the right way to do it. And now we need to go through and cut the rest of these. So my next tool up is my flush cutters. And so it should be fairly easy to tell, fairly obvious, but I don't want to call it fairly obvious, um, which way these guys go through and how they go through. Because the very next thing that I see is that I have one, two, three, and I have an extra hole over there. So let me double check that real quick. Okay, so this is the point where it doesn't look right to me, but I'm just going to go for it because the amount of wires is right, but the hole alignment does not look right to me. So, snip. And then this one here goes down through the top. And then we need to feed this one. Okay, now it's starting to make more sense. I was overthinking it. This one comes back unwound a little bit so that you can get the free end down into the hole on the inside. And I'm just being extra careful not to overlap those turns. Next cut, cut. I don't know, 
would I rather surface mount components or wine toroids? Again, you have to thread this one back through the underside and up and then back down into that hole. Okay, and this is the part that gives me pause, but this is what he says to do in the directions. And it only gives me pause because it does, not because it's right or wrong. I'm not arguing with him. It's just different for me. And that's okay. Oh, it's looking good. Oh, yeah. And then this one is right near the last hole, and you don't need to unwrap it. You just need to put it through the hole. I'm just trying my best to not kink it as it comes through the hole. Because that would be a real pain in the butt to get this far. And then find out that you kinked it. Probably should not have a whole lot of caffeine in the morning. All right, man, that looks good. Okay, and on the underside of the board, it should look a little bit like this, because you twisted them as you were going along. And somehow they kept getting untwisted. But now on the underside of the board, you have four sets of twisted wires coming out of the holes. All right, let me move my camera a bit. Zoom out. Manual zoom in. Look at that. All right. There we go. Okay, and what he says to do in the instructions is to use your soldering iron to burn off the enamel wire. So you want to hold it for a good 10 seconds on each one of these solder joints. So out comes the solder. And I want to put some fresh solder on my tip, which has been sitting here roasting for a bit. And then clean it off. Nice and clean tip. Start with whichever one makes you happy. You can almost see it work. And I got a little solder in a hole next door. And that's okay, we'll clean that up when we get to it. Perfect. Time for another tool. And this one here is my multimeter. And you wanna set the multimeter for continuity mode and mine very conveniently beeps when there is continuity. And what you're supposed to do is verify that there is continuity between each point. So let's do that. Nice. Okay. And 
There isn't continuity between all of them. Okay, so this one here is good. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. So the two outer ends, and then these two, and then those two, and then those two. Perfect. And that makes sense because that's how it's cut. So we did a good job. Okay, so that is done. And I will give you my thoughts on this part of the project. So first off, the, the TO roid, the, the TO tool roid, the TO roid trick is to section these off into manageable groups and double check your count. So this is supposed to be 30 turns. So I want six sets of five or I want three sets of 10. I did three sets of 10. Um, these guys here are three sets of three already. Um, I don't know if I would have made the loops longer or not longer. I don't know if that would have helped at all. Um, this tool is a chip lifter. It really has nothing to do with, with this project at all. Um, it's just what I was using because I happen to have had it. And these guys do not need to be terribly neat because you can clean it up afterwards and as a matter of fact if you do have some trouble you can actually reach in here and you can kind of tweak that little bit together there and maybe get it into a little bit better of a tune um, so you can always spread it out a little bit later on how long did this take me i'd have to look back at the footage um, i'll put a card on the screen with how long it took me to do this but i did take some time i am also filming which takes some extra time i stopped the camera went over looked at the instructions did a couple of quick checks um, it wasn't really all that bad. So that's the toroid. So the question, would I rather wind toroids or solder surface mount components? These little guys here are awful tiny. There's a whole bunch of them there and I can't even see them looking at the camera. Look at that. Oh my. But there's a trick for, for doing these surface mount components if you're really going to get after it. Um, and you get a mask and you put the sheet of metal down on top of it and it's got little holes where the components are and you spread paste over it and then you sit these guys in the paste and then you stick them in the oven so it's kind of a toss-up still i don't know let's see what step are we on in the instructions all right so we got to the end of step 18 in the instructions just on this one toroid and it is page 29. So the instructions are fantastic. I've got no complaints about the instructions so far. Um, so keep on keeping on, and that's what I am going to do. Oh, hey, thanks for being awesome.